Let's get to it. Uh, we have uh, our, our second topic, a newly released political climate poll from the University of Colorado at Boulder shows Democrat Jared Polis and Republican Tom Tancredo as, quote, front runners in the gubernatorial race. While over half of surveyed Democrats and Republicans are still, quote, undecided, Tancredo raked in 25% in the poll and Polis raked in 24%. Uh, Michael, this poll was done uh, officially in late November, so it's pretty early. Uh, and you could, it's easy to say that Polis and Tancredo have a lot of name recognition. Mm -hmm. But if you are in the camps of the other folks in the primaries on in either side of it, are you worried or, hey, this is January, I'm not, th 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 this doesn't mean anything? I'm very worried for, for two reasons. One is on the Republican side, Tom Tancredo has a ceiling, but that ceiling's in the high 20s, right? And now recently you had the candidates come out, four of them saying they're gonna petition on the ballot. So you have Robinson, Mitchell, Stapleton, and Kaufman who said they're gonna petition on the ballot, and that means that at least one or two more will come out of the assembly. So now you have a five or six person race with Tom Tancredo with a solid group of support. Uh, and so I just don't see how if it's going to be a six-person race, unless you know Kaufman or Stapleton can make it a two-person race, which is going to be difficult when both of them are in the race, uh, I think Tancredo is the front runner in that. And, and on the other side, on the Democratic side, I don't see how anybody catches Jared Polis, especially because of his war chest. When you're up, you know, by double digits at this point, um, you know, I think it's disappointing for the, the lieutenant governor. I think it's disappointing for Mike Johnson, who's raising a lot of money and going around the state, but hasn't picked up uh, the support that he needs. So there's still months and months to go. Um, but I think if you're not named Polis or Tancredo, you need a game-changing moment that makes you have a one-on-one -on -one with those front runners. Penn, what do you make of uh, the challenge ahead for uh, the folks who aren't Polis and Tancredo in both primaries? So I, I like the point that Michael brought up, and I saw that Michael Johnson, with all the fundraising he's been doing, being in the race, not the longest, but near the longest, he was still polling at the same rate that Donna Lynn was polling, who I think at that point in the game had gotten into the race maybe a couple weeks before that poll was taken. So is that disheartening, or are we reading way too much into a small poll uh, this early in the campaign? I think the latter. I think we're reading way too much into the small poll this early in the campaign for a basic reason, and it's a point Michael touched on. You, you've got a large field on both sides of the aisle, both Republican and Democrat. You've got a large number of candidates who are going to petition on and probably make the ballot. Uh, and so really what's going to happen is who turns out their respective base in the primary. What is interesting is, I'm not surprised with the polling. I mean, Tancredo and Polis have the largest name recognition among everybody in the race. So if you do a poll and people are going to say, yeah, I heard of this person, and that's the way it turns out. So that's not surprising. But I think the other dynamic at play here is both Polis and Tancredo are probably the two candidates their respective parties would least like to see as the nominee, because they're concerned that it en enhances the likelihood of the other side winning the general election. And, and I think that's an interesting dynamic here, and we'll have to see how the activists in the various parties deal with this. At one point, there was a pitch um, where people were saying, you know, Tom and everybody else ought to drop out so Walker Stapleton can have the Republican nomination. And Tom's saying, why? I'm ahead in every poll. Why should I drop out? Um, and similarly, Jared Polis is not going to hear similar pleas from Democrats saying, who have told him, you can't win statewide. He's like, well, so what? If I get the nomination, I got a 50-50 shot. And, and so that dynamic is at play here. And it's a very different time given both what's happening locally and nationally. So I'm not convinced this poll means very much right now. <laughs> I think you make a great point about the parties. I mean, it's they're different people, it's a different situation, but it's not that terribly different from what we saw nationally in the presidential race over two years ago, thinking, well, gosh, almost the traditional Republicans saying, well, anybody but Trump, Trump wins, like, okay, he's our guy. The same thing with Democrats saying, that's why you get the Bernie army, is because, well, anybody else in this, and then they're faced with that situation. It's, it's gonna be an interesting 2018. Uh, John, Denver is uh, definitely, I mean, there, there's Democratic uh, bases throughout Colorado, but Denver's the biggest one. Who has the edge in the Democratic race in Denver? Well, it's not only the, it's not only the base, it's the money. And I think Jared's going to have about 10 million bucks he's going to throw into this race. I mean, that's what people are, are saying. Walker Stapleton is on the, uh, is on the uh, CU uh, 
committee that released the report, which is kind of interesting as well. Um, I like Tom, you know, but he's he's now wearing the Sturgis motorcycle caps, the ball caps like you get at the come and go. I, I want a president. I, I, I want a governor. I want I want somebody who wears a dress hat. You know, if you're not going to wear a dress hat, the ball caps are, I love them, but I got a million of them. But you don't, you, that's not presidential, and that's not, and that's not gubernatorial, I guess. Um, bottom line, I think Polis and, and Johnson uh, uh, are good on the Democratic side. Johnson, like you mentioned, he's, he's a man on the move. I just don't know that he's got the name recognition that's going to stand up uh, with either Polis or, um, or Tancredo. Patty, if you're in the other camps on both sides of the coin, are you worried or is this something to just be ignored? Well, I don't think you are going out to get a dress hat right now. <laughs> Look who got elected president of the United States well, wearing the worst ball caps ever. <laughs> you know, people are not voting based on ball caps, or maybe they are. We're exactly where we predicted we would be six months ago before this poll came out, which is... Tancredo and Polis have name recognition and they have fans. It's not, you know, name recognition can work both ways because people have opinions of Polis and they have opinions of Tancredo and a lot of them aren't going to vote for them. But there's a solid quarter of their party that will. And that's going to be enough probably to get them through the primary. So right now what you're wondering is who's out there strategizing can a third party candidate jump in at a certain point if that is, for both parties, the worst case scenario?